Thank you, Phil and Francesco. When you asked me to give this talk, and I really gladly accepted it. That was a little challenge for me, being a guy that's been doing a lot of work on diabetes after gastric bypass. Really, this for me the occasion to look with a little fair you know, assessment of what is the effect of a restricted procedure on a sleeve gastrectomy and a banding. I think it's, it's very, very important to look at these two procedures because uh, they're widespread, and I think it's very important to, really to assess the last uh, you know, update in terms of a change uh, um, after you know, this procedure. These are my disclosure. Now we know that body weight is highly regulated, and therefore there is a lot of mechanism in our body that keep this uh, you know, weight under control. Usually we have some counter-regulation that change appetite and metabolic rate proportional to the change in body weight. This has been working essentially for many centuries very well, for many thousands of years. At the center of this uh, you know, regulation is the adipostat. There are four components, the brain, the body fat stores, the calorie intake, and the circulating signals. All these are four components are equally contributing to keep you know, our weight you know, stable. In the last 50 years, we observe essentially a um, more and more obesogenic environment. We eat more because there is more food available. That was not true before the Second World War. We have seen an increase in uh, portion size. Uh, if you look uh, back in uh, McDonald's in the 50s, a 12 ounce soda was just a uh, uh, maxi size. Now it's a child size. We also have a uh, food with the uh, Increased energy density. Essentially, we can eat a lot of calories in a small portion. Also, we do less. We increase the sedentary leisure activity. We also we don't work. You know, really, we don't do a lot of work for our daily activities. And more important, we now use our, uh, you know cars to go around. That we don't walk that much anymore. For that reason, really, obesity has become the number one problem in all over the world, especially you know, when we're here in this World Congress, it's very important to point out that right now it's not only US, UK, essentially all the world. In the past you know, 50 years, a lot of pharmaceutical companies are trying to find the magic pill for busy. But really, all these attempts are pretty much failed because really, when you need a therapy for obesity, you need to affect all these four components. And today, there is no pill that can affect all these four components. But we have you know, the right pill for obesity. I think it's a bariatric surgery. All this procedure, gastric bypass, gastric banding, sleeve gastric, it really affect all the four components of the, our adipostat. The key question is really how bariatric surgery affect you know, weight loss. It's just calorie restriction, or there are other you know, components they're affected, they can make you know, this a very effective therapy for obesity. We know that essentially, after many, many studies, that now bariatric surgery affect appetite control, glucose and lipid metabolism, insulin homeostasis, and also all the regulatory peptide originating from the gut. In the next few slides, I'm trying to challenge the concept of only calorie restriction as the mechanism for these two most common restrict procedure, the gastric banding and the sleeve gastrectomy. We're going to essentially review some changes in the enterencephalic endocrine axis, the essential is the metabolic effect of these two procedures. This is a laparoscopy adjustable gastric banding. In this room, essentially with surgeons, you know, I don't have to spend a lot of time. We place a silicone band in the first portion of the stomach. The idea essentially to create a small you know, uh, pouch can reinduce the calorie restriction. Now, before I start to talk more about you know, what happened after gastric banding, it's very important to tell essentially the truth. The banding is the first thing you know, that procedure really proved to be effective in a randomized clinical trial. That was done by Dixon and published in JAMA. And in this randomized clinical trial, they compared 30 patients undergoing uh, gastric banding with 30 patients undergoing intense medical treatment. The outcome measure were primary remission of type 2 diabetes as measured by fasting plasma glucose and hemoglobin A1C. A secondary uh, endpoints were weight loss and components of the metabolic syndrome. 
all, all the patients before undergoing randomization, they underwent uh, three months of optimization of diabetic uh, therapy, and then they were randomized in these two groups. They were followed for two years. They also, this study has to really to be, you know, a really, uh, because it is a very long-term study compared with other studies we have in bariatric surgery. Definitely you can see there is a significant difference in terms of uh, excess weight loss uh, between the control group and the laparoscopic adjustable gastric banding. Uh, essentially, we're very, you know, less than 10% in the control group, and we, uh, they observe more than 60% in the adjustable gastric banding group. Also more important, uh, because these are patients with type 2 diabetes, uh, they observe a 70% uh, remission of diabetes in the adjustable gastric banding group uh, with only 10% in the you know, control group. You know, Dixon and co others conclude essentially the mean hemoglobin 1C and the fasting plans of good levels were significantly lower in the surgical group compared with the, the conventional therapy. It was also true two years after randomization. There was also a significant reduction in number of medication used to control type 2 diabetes in this, in this uh, core of patients undergoing uh, uh, gastric banding. Also, if you look at you know, the component of metabolic syndrome, there are much lower you know, um, component of the metabolic syndrome in the group of patients undergoing uh, gastric banding. Therefore, definitely they also observe a, a significant decrease in a, a insulin resistance in the group of patients undergoing uh, gastric banding compared with the control group. Now, how this effect uh, can only come from uh, you know, gastric restriction? That is the big question. I think it's very important at this point really to look at what gastric banding does in terms of the anteroinsular uh, axis. These are some uh, uh, hormones we usually test in a fasting status or also after meal stimulation in most of our study. We do uh, ghrelin, PYY, leptin, and diponectin. This study was published in 2009 by the Moskin and in, uh, in Journal of Pathology. I think it was a, this is a very interesting study because they look essentially uh, at hypokine levels in the circulation and also in the liver by real-time PCR. As you can see, after you know, a six and 12 months after uh, adjustable gastric banding, there is a significant increase in the adiponectin levels. As you see in the other uh, panel, there was also a significant increase on the adiponectin expression in the liver. And we know how important is the liver in the glucose you know, uh, metabolism. Therefore, definitely, you know, there is an effect on adiponectin expression in the circulating and hepatic form after gastric banding. The same others also found a significant effect on leptin. We know the obese patients have leptin resistance, and they have a high level of leptin usually. And they found this, uh, the same situation, the gastric banding significantly decreased the, the level of leptin at six and 12 months after the procedure. But again, very, very important. Also, they saw a significant decrease in the uh, gene expression of uh, 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 leptin in the liver. Now, a little more disappointing has been you know, findings regarding GLP-1 and GIP. In this study from uh, New York, Dr. Corner and collaborators showed essentially after meal stimulation uh, uh, study, there is not really a significant difference between uh, you know, obese control and uh, gastric banding in terms of GLP-1 you know, circulating uh, form and also GIP form. What about PAYY and ghrelin? In um, the same group, you know, just uh, two years later, has published another study regarding this, again, using the meal stimulation test. In the lower panel, you see the, under, the area under the curve that is easier you know, to, you know, to, essentially to get the, the idea how significant is the difference. In this study, again, there was not really any significant difference at, uh, um, um, after you know, uh, gastric banding in terms of the expression of, uh, of the circulating form of PYY and ghrelin. There was a little bit you know, a trend in the early phase for PYY, but this effect essentially uh, later on was essentially not anymore there. And in the same study also, they compared this uh, with, uh, you know, with the gastric bypass surgery, 
and um, definitely in the gastric bypass surgery, there's uh, a significant persistent effect in uh, uh, making uh, uh, in elevating the PYY levels. Now, regarding ghrelin, uh, again, they didn't uh, determine any difference in terms of uh, ghrelin level, you know, after gastric uh, banding compared with the controls. Also, at the same time, a little bit, you know, something that we have to think about. They saw, uh, you know, later on, an increase compared with the pre-op level of ghrelin. Uh, that can be maybe something that can be detrimental in the long term. Then if you look at the summary for the laparoscopic uh, gastric banding, the fact of the, the, um, the gastric banding on patient with oligopro is accepted by caloric restriction for sure, but also change in circulating hepatic levels of adiponectin and leptin. We know that lapo, uh, laparoscopic adjustable gastric banding does not induce any significant changes in the PYY, ghrelin, GLP, and GIP peptides. Therefore, you know, we can conclude that the um, um, adjustable gastric banding is categorized as a restrictive procedure. However, some of this metabolic fat can be mediated by change in the uh, expression of some adipokines like lactin and uh, adiponectin. Now, what about the sleep gastrectomy? There is a recent study you know, published in 2005 that compared essentially granule levels after you know, sleep gastrectomy versus uh, gastric banding. And they also confirmed the previous finding that essentially granule levels can go up compared with the pre-op levels in the, after banding. But you can see the dramatic effect on ghrelins by sleep gastrectomy. Level of ghrelins goes down and also stay down so up to six months after surgery. In this other study, it was a randomized study from out of Greece that was published on anal surgery in 2008. This study essentially uh, 32 uh, patients randomized to Ruben Y gastric bypass and sleep gastrectomy. Are you seeing the lower uh, table that is significant weight loss uh, with the uh, pre-op BMI from 45 to post-op BMI to uh, 26.9? Also significant excess weight loss, 69% uh, at uh, 12 months. But very, very important for the enteroinsular access, uh, a significant uh, 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 decrease of ghrelin from a level of 600 down to 399 that persists at 12 months. Also, a significant increase in PYY from a 124 up to 204. And this uh, also finds or confirmed also with meal stimulation test. And uh, ghrelin uh, uh, were significant, you know, uh, uh, postprandial level of ghrelin were significant lower after, you know, uh, bending as well as, you know, after bypass. But also, the only difference PYY is something that has been trouble so this investigator for a while was essentially why at 12 months the P PYY increase now was much blunter than you know, the one observed at three or six months. That is now, you know, make people sometimes postulating maybe the PYY effect of sleeve extratomy may be, at the end, maybe be less with, with, with more you know, follow-up. If you want to summarize the, you know, the effect of a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, we know that essentially, again, it's exerted primarily by caloric restriction, but at the same time by ghrelin, because essentially removing the gastric fundus, we remove most of the source for the ghrelin. We know also that meal stimulation PYY is significantly higher after a sleeve gastrectomy. However, you know, there is some concern that effect is going to be fade over time. Then we can really categorize, you know, Sleeve extraction as a restricted operation. However, its ability to extend beyond caloric restriction is, is, is possible with changes in uh, uh, ghrelin and also partially with changing in uh, PYY levels. Thank you very much.